Let's talk about the neuroscience of learning skills, in particular, how to learn skills faster. There are four steps in motor sequence generation, which is just fancy language for how to move our limbs in particular ways. We have upper motor neurons. Neurons are just nerve cells. Those are in our brain in an area called the motor cortex. Those send little wires that we call axons down to our spinal cord. And in our spinal cord, we have another set of neurons called the lower motor neurons. The lower motor neurons send their own little wires out to the muscles and they dump chemicals on those muscles to make the muscles contract. And muscles, of course, move limbs and body segments like our torso. There's another player in this called the CPGs or central pattern generators. These are really cool neurons. They are clusters of neurons scattered throughout our spinal cord that can control rhythmic movements that we already know how to perform. So if you already know how to walk, dance, play tennis, run, your central pattern generators are handling those and they handle that without the involvement of the upper motor neurons. Now the upper motor neurons can take control of any of those things that we already know how to do at any moment. So for instance, if you can already walk, but you want to slow down or speed up your pace, you activate that slowing down or speeding up with your upper motor neurons. But then you'll notice your central pattern generators will just take over. You don't have to think about it much. Now, when we learn a skill, we need to engage the upper motor neurons. And the best way to do that, in fact, the only way to do that is to focus. And the question always is what to focus on. And that answer is made simple by the neuroscience literature that supports that error recognition, focusing on your screw ups, activates the frontal cortex areas that cue up focus, increase focus, and lead to heightened activation of upper motor neurons that then generate more powerful communication through these circuits that I'm describing. And in other words, errors increase focus to errors, which is mentally, psychologically uncomfortable, but that increases activation of the upper motor neurons for deliberate action and leads to faster learning. So all of this can be distilled into a simple process. In the end, what you want to do is generate the maximum number of repetitions that you safely can. So that would be more steps, more, uh, you know, if you're trying to learn archery, you know, more attempts shooting. If you're trying to learn any skill, more repetitions, as many as you safely can pack into a training session. And how long that training session will last will depend on a lot of different factors. But you want to generate the maximum number of repetitions and you absolutely want to make errors. A lot of people, when they make errors, because there's a little bit of epinephrine, adrenaline released into the brain and body when we do that, we feel frustrated and we want to walk away from the process or we think we're screwing up. Those errors and the chemicals that are deployed in response to those errors are opening the gate for neuroplasticity. The agitation is the entry point for neuroplasticity, and indeed that's true, but errors are the entry point for true focus. And errors and agitation and focus together, repeated over and over, is what leads to motor skill learning. So the simple way to describe this is you want to generate reps, generate repetitions, as many as you safely can in a given session. Make errors, focus on those errors, and when you do that, you will naturally engage the upper motor neurons to fire more robustly. And then you want to repeat. So it's repetitions, errors, focus, repeat. Repetitions, errors, focus, repeat. Now there's always the issue of reward. When and what to reward? Well, rewards come in the form of chemicals that are released subjectively, right? When you perform something correctly, there will be a release of the neuromodulator dopamine and that will help reinforce whatever circuit preceded the activity that came right before the success, before the dopamine. But if you reward every trial, then it doesn't work as well. Do what the casinos do, do what the people that control gambling do to keep people going, which is intermittent reward. So say you perform something successfully, you might want to reward that. You might want to reward the next one and the next one as well. But every once in a while, you want to leave out the rewarding of a successful trial, of a successful performance. That could be a whole game. It could be one repetition. And what do you do instead? you get right back into more repetitions. This is really the key to reinforcing this whole process. Intermittent reward is very powerful and it works very well, which is why the people that control gambling use it and it always works out in their favor, at least on average. So that's learning skills and how to learn faster using the neuroscience of basically neuromuscular junctions and all the other stuff you might have heard of uh, in the neuroscience literature. I've tried to make it as simple as possible. And as always, 
Thank you for your interest in science.